Okay, doing... Was it 1d6? Yep. Not so good. Aha, so the Americans have initiative this round. So the first thing we're going to try and do is rally Major Tom. So to do a rally, it's 2d6 two two versus his morale. And if you're in uh, a hex that has a positive uh, target modifier, or terrain effects modifier, uh, you get to subtract 2 from your die roll. Okay. So I need to roll 2d6. I rolled a 5 and minus 2 because I'm in a wooden building is 3. So he passes. So he gets to come back into unshaken status. The other squad that's shaken is all by itself. There's no leader in his hex, so he can't, uh, he can't attempt to rally. Now, this is also the point as if, if at this point, if you wanted to uh, dismantle to move a tripod weapon, you'd do that. So, like, my squad here wants to build his machine gun so he can actually use it next this round. Um, I think I'll keep it equipped. Okay. So then that would be the end of the rally phase. And then it's my first impulse. So to demonstrate another uh, aspect of the game, I'm going to initiate a melee. I knew you were going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I moved my squad from F2 into G2. And, and just because we, uh, we talked about it between recording sessions there, I uh, just wanted to clarify to the the video viewing audience that your objective is to get uh, a majority of the buildings on the right hand side of the row H. Yes. By turn 8. By the end of turn 8. And you, there's 10 buildings and you currently own all 10. Okay. So by moving into your hex I initiate a melee. So we get a melee counter. and immediately try to resolve this melee. So there should be a melee table on your uh, player aid card. Okay. And we compare my firepower, which is 2, to your firepower, which is 3. So the closest set of odds to that is 1 to 2 for me. And on, on that, that's a kill, there's a give, gives a kill number of 10, which means I need to roll a 10 or better on 2 dice to kill your unit. So if I roll two dice and I roll an eight, I don't do any damage to your guys. And so you immediately attack back. Okay. And you've got three to two, and there's actually a column for three to two. So you need to roll a seven or better on two dice to kill me. You roll an eleven, which means my guys die. Rats. <laughs> now, uh, you can ask Arnold. Uh, it's very rare for me to roll anything other than a one, so <laughs> feel lucky. So now that uh, if my guys had not died, that hex would be locked in melee, which means nobody can fire into it. Uh, you got you can move guys into it, or I can move guys into it to uh, what's called reinforce the melee hex. But no other combat takes place in that hex until next turn. Okay. So it's just there's just a big rumble going on in that hex, and that's it for this. That would be it for this round. But since you kill my guys, uh, your guys are free to move or shoot out of that hex. Okay. So can I remove? Is there any need to remove the melee marker? Um, not yes, yes, because uh, there's a melee going on in there right now. Right. So nobody else can fire into that hex. Okay, and I. I can move out of there even with the melee marker on there, correct? Yes. Okay. All right, so that is your initiative. Now it's mine? That's correct. Okay. Your impulse. Okay, your turn. Okay, now we can move the melee counter. This is very quick. I like it. Yeah, it's very quick playing. Um, 
Okay. Uh, now, for, did you put? You didn't pull out your reinforcements for this. If you flip the scenario card over, you get more reinforcements. Oh, I didn't see that page. Okay, I'm going to pause the recording for just a second. Yep. Okay, so your uh, reinforcements, you have a sniper, which is a special kind of unit. Um, he can appear at any time, anywhere on the board that's not occupied by an enemy unit, and and shoot right away. So what snipers are good is for picking off guys that are moving in the open. Right. And he attacks a little differently. He rolls two, two dice, because his, his attack firepower, you see, is a zero. He's got a range of eight, and he's got no movement. So when you place the sniper, you have to be aware of where he is, because if an enemy unit moves into his hex, he dies automatically. And his range is eight. His range is eight. His firepower is zero, but he rolls two dice. So it's 2d6 plus instead of 1d6. So you can do a lot of damage and pop out of thin air, which is uh, annoying. <laughs> so you moved, so now it's my impulse. So I'm going to try a spotting just to show you how that works. So Sergeant Hill in d6 is going to attempt to spot your guys in G6. Okay. Because because I, I can't shoot at them unless I've, they're spotted first. So to do a sp to spot somebody in a building, I need to roll a two or less on one die minus uh, my uh, leadership factor. And he's got a leadership factor of one. So I need a three or less to spot you. And I roll a three, so that means you're spotted. So you get a spotted counter. And I can immediately use uh, Sergeant Hill to direct all these guys to fire into your hex. Okay. Now, if you were unsuccessful, were you committed in activating that unit and completing some sort of activation with him? Yes. If I, if I had not spotted, uh, Sergeant Hill would be marked with a, a marker called Ops Complete, okay. which means... His, he's done for the turn. He, the guys in his hex can do other things, but he's done for the turn. Okay. So since we're successful, we're going to... Now, since we have a stack of units, it, uh, they add up a little differently. So your first... The first squad uh, fires at full firepower, so that's two factors. Uh, every other squad after that only adds half of their firepower. So that the second squad adds one, and then the MG adds its full firepower. So that's a total of five. And then a plus one for my leader, so that's six. So I get one, one die six plus six as in my attack. Okay. So I get, and I rolled a five, so that makes a, a 11 is my attack. Right. Your defense is in a wood building, so you get one die plus three. So your defense is seven. So that means your guys have to face a damage check of uh, one die plus four. The difference between eleven and seven. Oof. So you roll five. So that's for your leader. You always roll the leader first. So that means he's shaken because it's more than uh, five plus four is more than seven. And then you do for the squad. A one. Ah, so good. I'm glad you rolled a one. So you roll a one plus four is five. So that squad is not shaken. But every time you roll a one on a damage check, there's a possibility that a hero gets generated. For you or for me? For you. <laughs> good. <laughs> yes, this means your guys, you know, reacted spectacularly well and one guy steps up. So you roll a 1, so that's a possibility of a hero. So you no roll another d6, and if it's even, you get a hero. Very good, you roll a 6. 
So now you go up to your counters uh, section and axis and in single man counters you'll see two heroes Harper and Repath. Right. Repar. So roll a, a one, two, three, you get Harper, and a four, five, six, you get the other guy. They're both the same, so it doesn't really matter. So you get Repar. And put him on that hex. And, and now you get to draw a skill card for that hero. Now, skill cards are, are special modifiers to heroes and leaders. Sometimes a scenario will tell you a leader uh, gets a special skill to start the game with. Um, and whenever a hero is generated, he always gets a randomly selected uh, skill. So there's a button at the top of the uh, window called uh, BOH Skill Cards. Got it. So you click on that and draw the first card and put it off to the side where your reinforcements are and then uh, click it and flip it over. The ambush. So that's for hero or leader. It's a single use, which means you get to, you get to use this ability once. And you basically just follow the instructions. Play when a unit occupies an enemy hex or is adjacent to an enemy. And then you roll 1d6 and you can get uh, some reinforcements to ambush uh, my guys. It's a pretty powerful card. Okay. Now if you right click that card and click on the word counter. You get a little counter that you put underneath your hero so you can so you know that what uh, skill he has. Very good. Okay. And then my guys have fired. So it's your impulse. So I'm going to bring some reinforcements in here. Okay. And they will fire at the shaken unit in the building directly across. So they have to spot him first. Oh, okay. Because he's in a building? Hmm. Yeah. Okay. We'll do the spotting first. Okay. So s since you're spotting with a squad, he needs a two or less on one d on a, di a die six. Oh, well. I'm rolling hot tonight. <laughs> so they didn't spot. Right. So you mark him with an ops complete. So they can't do anything else. Okay. Now... That doesn't uh, that doesn't count as an op uh, as a, an impulse. Uh, you can do one spotting attempt per turn uh, per turn uh, per impulse, sorry, and uh, so you can still move or shoot with somebody else if you'd like. Can you hold up for just one second? Okay, um, I've got a I've got a cut out, so we'll end this scenario early. Um, like I said, this this scenario is really tough on the Americans. They have to try and capture buildings. Uh, that the Germans can easily defend and uh, I need to start I also get a hero as one of my reinforcements over here and he's actually Walker and uh, so I need to scoot him around usually scoot him around the bottom edge of the board and get up to uh, some of these buildings 
Although you've got most of your reinforcements down there, so I may have to scoot him across the top. But it's uh, it's a lot of open ground to cover, and you've got big machine guns pointing at all the guys, so it's it's rough. It's a rough scenario. It's fun though. Now, could you tell us a little bit about the lock and load series, uh, the difference between the historical and the non-historical games? Uh, sure. Uh, what we're playing here is from the uh, World War II. Uh, module called uh, Band of Heroes and it's a standalone module it's got six map boards and units from the Americans and the uh, Germans as opposing combatants um, there are expansions for this that add different set of units and they're uh, the first one out was called Swift and Bold and you'll notice that it doesn't have heroes in the title that means it's an expansion and needs to uh, you need a uh, main module to play it. So you need Band of Heroes to play anything, any of the scenarios out of Swift and Bold. And it adds the uh, British paratroopers. And then there was another module called Not One Step Back, which added three more boards that were more of terrain of uh, the East Front because it added Russian troops. Um, so there was another, uh, another module with Russians in it that was called uh, uh, Dark July. Um, another module for mm -hmm. the uh, Battle of the Bulge called Noville. And then there was a, uh, another expansion module called Heroes of the Blitzkrieg. Now that's a standalone module. It contains everything you need to play. It included six more maps, all geomorphic, that, add, that match any of the other maps. And it's about the uh, 1940 invasion of France. So it's got Germans against French troops and Belgian troops. There's actually a couple of Belgian scenarios. And there's an expansion planned for that that's going to have uh, the BEF, the British troops. There's uh, another set of modules set in Vietnam. The main module for that one is called Forgotten Heroes. And the expansion for that is called Anzac Attack, which adds uh, Commonwealth troops. The main uh, module has the Americans, and uh, the Army of uh, Vietnam against the uh, Viet Cong. Yeah, fighting in the jungle. It's really close combat. It's a, that one's a lot of fun. The scenarios in that are, are, are very interesting. There's a module mm -hmm. out called Ring of Hills, which is about the Argentine-British uh, uh, War in the Falkland Islands. Now, that's not a standalone module. It requires Band of Heroes to play because that was the main module that Mark had out at the time. But it's set in 1982, I guess, when that was. There's another standalone module called Day of Heroes, which is about the Americans in uh, Mogadishu in Somalia in 93. Basically, kind of set around the events uh, of uh, Black Hawk Down, that novel slash movie. Oh, cool. It's again. It's got some pretty tense, uh, tense scenarios, and it departs from this a little bit in that the board is not hexes. It's made up of square areas, square um, hexes, <laughs> and uh, so the American troops are are restricted to moving um, only in orthogonal directions, but the Somali mobs can move uh, diagonally through buildings. So it's it it. Uh, that's just to uh, give the effect of them knowing the town better than the Americans did. Uh, there's a new module just out called Heroes of the Gap. Again, a standalone. This takes place in 1985. Uh, the Russians have invaded uh, West Germany in a fictional, fictional area called uh, around a city called Eisenbach. And this is based loosely on uh, a set of Mark Walker's novels uh, that he's writing about uh, a World War III combat. And there's an expansion just about to be uh, set to, uh, is being worked on and about to be published, and it's called uh, Honor and Patrie. It's uh, adds the French troops to the World War III uh, combat. There's also work being done on several other modules. One's called Heroes of the Pacific, 
and it's uh, the U.S. Marines versus the Japanese, and it's going to have really tight combat because it's all jungle. So there'll be lots of melees and, and short-range fighting. Um, that's about it. That's about all the squad-level stuff that he's working on right now. Very good. Um, are you a playtester or developer in the game? or? Uh, no, I've gotten a, involved with Mark in helping him uh, build Vassal modules for his games. Okay, great. So I did the Vassal module for Here's the Gap. I did it for um, White Star Rising. And I did it for another game that's about to come out called uh, Nuclear Winter 68, which should be an interesting game. Well, I really appreciate you doing the demo tonight. I've uh, wanted to play this game for a long time, and uh, now I'm sorry that I waited so long. Hey, any time. Uh, we're playing again tomorrow night. Come out and watch. All right. Thanks very much. You're welcome.